Hello, it's Tom Digital Foundry. Quantum Break was left in a bit of a state around launch, and this week we have the 27GB patch to potentially address its issues. These range from stuttering frame rates, the inability to run the game at a straight native 1080p, and also driver crashes, all of which left a bad taste in the mouths of people who'd spent so much on the game at launch. But with this patch, things are looking brighter, and though there are still some big issues, it is now possible to play the game at 1080p and 60 frames per second. With the game patched, a full 60fps is now possible with some tinkering. As before, you get around 45 frames per second during the opening university chapter. And so to finally play Quantum Break at 60 FPS, you have to drop a few settings. Our approach to this is simple though. With everything maxed out, drop volumetric lights and shadows to high, and also effects to medium. Now this still gives you above the Xbox One grade visuals, where the console runs this game at medium quality settings across the board. But on the R9 390, this mixture of medium, high and ultra settings gets us to a pretty stable 60 FPS. This is exactly what we were looking for at launch, the smoothest we've ever seen in the game, and even with the cutbacks we're making here, the game still looks great. It simply goes to show just how taxing Remedy's ultra preset for lighting is. Of course, there's an elephant in the room here. Why aren't we using the GTX 970? Well, we followed the advice given by Remedy's forums, installing an earlier Nvidia driver 362.0, but very quickly found ourselves bumping into a familiar issue. The game crashed, and so we tried a complete fresh driver install to 364.72, and again the game eventually buckled and came to a halt. Next we tried the very latest driver, 365.1, and playing the game for any longer than 5-10 to 10 minutes caused, yep, another driver recovery. Curiously, we noticed a 50-60 to 60 megabyte crash dump file be made each time, buried deep in our app data directory. All of which is to say, between Nvidia's drivers and the game's optimization work, something is amiss right now. But what little we could test on driver 365.1 showed again that the GTX 970 falls far behind the R9 390 in this opening walk, giving AMD's card a 50% lead. It's no better or worse than it was before, and we'll be quick to report on any improvements for this card when they come. For AMD users though, it's smooth sailing. You get an already decent level of performance, and with the tweaks we've mentioned, 60fps is also very doable too. But hang on a second, what's this? The big revelation is you can now toggle upscaling and film grain, two huge options that clear up image quality when disabled. Now film grain is a personal preference, and Remedy recommends leaving it on, but it's the upscaling mode that's the interesting one. It's the image reconstruction technique that blends four separate frame buffers running with four times MSAA each, and each base frame buffer runs at two thirds of your set resolution at the top of this menu. So for the many of us running at a standard 1080p at top here, that means four separate 720p frames pieced together, just like Xbox One. With that mode disabled though, you can see exactly what you're missing. Compared to the standard upscaled mode, you get back detail on high contrast points at a straight 1080p. It does look sharper, without a doubt, and the rendering resolution for reflections and ambient occlusion also increased to match it, these effects going from 720p to 1080p once upscale is disabled. It's perhaps inevitable, but with upscaling disabled, an R9 390 can't run at a native 1080p60 at low settings, and our medium preset tests get us to around 40 frames per second as well. It's no surprise at all really, given how unique Quantum Break is in its ambitious light simulation, a global illumination process rarely seen in games. The R9 390 struggles to run Quantum Break at a non-upscaled native 1080p at 60fps then. Question is, can anything run this game at a pure 1080p60 with no upscaling involved? Well, we turn to the R9 Fury X to get some perspective, and it's again apparent you can't hit 60fps at the game's higher settings. In fact, what you're seeing here is the medium preset across the board, and even in this case you'll see some outstanding stutters here and there. It's definitely playable though, and essentially gives us Xbox One visuals at an unleashed 1080p60, so not bad going. To really nail a perfect 60fps on the Fury X, you need to dial back settings further, but the sacrifices in lighting and shadow quality start becoming too notable for our liking. Fury X owners have plenty of options though, and for 1080p60, sitting at medium is the best balance between image quality and performance. One workaround for this is the 30fps cap. The R9 390 and Fury X have enough headroom to make the in-game 30fps option worthwhile, to sacrifice performance for a full 1080p image. The good news is this mode is improved, and the stuttering we saw before the patch is massively minimised. It's now visibly smoother, even if it's not 100% perfect. 
Quantum Break is much improved then. You can run at a full 60fps on a card like the R9 390. You can disable the upscale mode for improved visual quality on the Fury X. And even the 30fps cap is better. But there are lingering issues like Nvidia's driver crashes, and also the unusual new glitches involving the sync up between camera, character and objects. Check this out, for some reason Jack's smartphone is now set to max vibration, causing it to go absolutely wild as we move forward. And likewise for his earpiece later on. It's very unusual and wasn't there before the patch. And it gets worse. At times, respawning at checkpoints has parts of the game renderer go out of sync with character animations. For example, check out the momentum in this shot as Jack runs. One frame gives us a small level of motion, the next huge, small and then huge again. It's very strange and even if you are running at 60fps, as we are here, the game feels like it's running much lower. It kicks in at random too and it's a sign the game still needs a lot of attention. That about covers it though, again we'll be back with GTX 970 testing when it's available, but if you'd like, let us know your experiences with Quantum Break so far in the comments. Like and subscribe if you found this handy, and until the next one, see you soon.